welcome back to the vlog. It's been an interesting couple of weeks. We've been here, there and everywhere with fabric sales. Um, we've helped a factory to clear some fantastic fabrics and of course we've picked up the cream of the crop to sell in the shop. So, oh, that rhymes. Um, so do come and have a look in the shop if you're in Leicester. We've got some really fantastic ribs. We've got lots of jerseys and we've got some super cool um, bonded uh, scubas as well, which are absolutely gorgeous and everybody who's seen them has absolutely loved them. So what have I been up to? I've been listening to um, the Love to Sew podcast on the way to work. We've been really, really enjoying that for the last couple of um, months, actually, since I discovered it. And um, yeah, I'm really enjoying learning quite a bit about how different businesses work and um, you know, Kate taking it from a kind of business perspective, but also from a um, personal sewing perspective. So it's really nice to kind of have something that um, really bridges those two things and um, and yeah, it's, it's really fun to listen to. So I was really excited when I heard that Gabby and Meg, uh, Megan um, from Gabadashery and Pigeon Wishes were getting together to do their own podcast. Hurrah, something from England. Because all the podcasts that I've been listening to are all American. It's just nice to hear a bit of a you know homegrown um, British perspective on things. So I listened to the first episode um, the other day again on my walk to work and it left me with a real spring in my step for the rest of the day. Um, I have about a half an hour walk so I listen to the first half um, one day and then second half another day and it's just really nice to have something to kind of get you set up for the day and um, yeah really really enjoying that so thank you very much ladies. The other things we've had going on, we've been really busy in the shop, so um, fabric sales are really, really good. I think people, despite the snow, are actually starting to kind of get the spring ahead on in terms of um, dressmaking. So uh, that's really cool to see lots of nice springy fabrics um, flying out the, the shop. So um, the other things that we've been doing are uh, we had a jeans workshop. So three lovely ladies came in and made ginger jeans with us and they did amazingly it was absolutely fantastic and we added rivets we added jeans buttons um and we just had a lot of fun really uh, and it was so nice to spend the day you know from my perspective as a teacher but also as a sewing enthusiast um with three ladies who were equally as enthusiastic about giving it giving it a go uh, it fell just at the end of um, No Fear New Jeans um, month, and um, which happened in February. And yeah, it was the perfect uh, finale to to that um, particular challenge. Uh, during that time, I made a pair of jeans and I started another pair. Um, my first pair I made out of a uh, mid blue denim, and I'm wearing them today. Um, I've got them on over tights today because it is still absolutely freezing. What is going on with this weather? I have no idea. They do fit, fit quite well over my tights. Um, they are a little bit looser than I'd sometimes wear skinny jeans, uh, but I tend to find that with some fabrics, some denims, um, after you wear them, they do go a little bit looser. So I didn't want to make the mistake that I made with my last pair, which was making them too small. Um, it wasn't that I put on weight. I made them too small, honest. I did a really cute little design on the pocket which I think I'm going to probably put on any other jeans that I um, make in the future so they'll be kind of branded. Um, I think that's the great thing about making your own jeans is you really can make them your own. Um, I also added a really cute little um, dress up print on the inside which is like this turquoise with lots of different bright colours. Um, and it's a fabric that I bought a long time ago from Antwerp um, when I was there for work and I knew it needed to be used for something absolutely gorgeous so I used it for um, a laptop case which is so much fun because I use that every day and I really love having um, a laptop case that's in a really like fun print um, and I had a little bit left, not much, but enough for the pockets um, of, the, of the ginger jeans. And so I use that uh, for the pockets and I just love like peeking in when I'm getting dressed. It's, I always think of like putting interesting prints in the lining of a garment as a special little treat for you. Like nobody else is going to see it really unless you, like I am, um, post it on 
um, social media or that kind of thing. But it is a little treat every day for you. And why shouldn't we spoil ourselves? You know, we're putting all this time into making this garment. So, yeah, treat yourself to a little bit of fun lining. <laughs> oh, I do know how to live. <laughs> The other thing we had this month was the Action Pack Day, which was when the um, ladies from uh, the Kickstarter, who supported the Kickstarter, um, came for a day of making the Action Pack uh, by My Handmade Wardrobe, our range of patterns. And um, they all looked fantastic when they'd finished their um, leggings and their tops. So in the day, we made the leggings in the morning and then I sent them all off for a bit of lunch to, you know, revive themselves and um, finish those off in the beginning of the afternoon. And then we actually made the tops in about two hours. Um, and these ladies were by no means like um, uh, professional sewers or anything like that. They, they weren't beginners, but they were they didn't have a huge amount of experience. And they managed to whip that top up with like elastic binding and... Um, and using you know, stretchy sportswear fabrics in two hours. So you know, it's such a, a fun pa uh, pattern to make and you can really have fun with it. Um, I've been having fun with it myself and um, I decided to add a heat transferable decal um, or transfer to the top that we'd made. Um, so I'll just grab that from here and show you what I've done. So as well as the cute pink top stitching, so I used like a um, pink thread to do my top stitching, I decided to add a little decal. And if you can see it there, I made it. And that only not only refers to the fact that, you know, I made the garment, but also that I actually made it and Trust me, that is an achievement when it comes to running for me. I did the Leicester 10K last September and I didn't think I was going to make it, but I did. So why not celebrate that with a top? And when I do the Leicester 10K next year, uh, sorry, this year, <laughs> later in September, I'm going to be wearing this. So yeah, I'm really happy with how that's turned out. And um, why shouldn't sportswear be just as fun as our everyday wear? as well um, especially if it motivates you to actually do some exercise which I need all the motivation for so um, yeah as well as that we've had a fantastic sunray bag workshop which um, was last Sunday and I'll pop a picture of the bags that the ladies made up here um, we had loads of fun picking out all the different fabrics um, and this is a pattern which we are thinking about developing as a kit so um, if you're interested in that, comment in the links below, sorry, comment in the comments below and um, we'd love to hear your thoughts um, about any other kits as well that you want to see. Um, the other things that we have been doing are the last Saturday, so we've had a really busy weekend actually with the workshops and events and things. Um, it was a really busy day in the shop. We uh, were selling lots and lots of fabric and then we shut the shop a bit early and we had the dressmakers afternoon tea, which was another Kickstarter event. And um, it was lovely. It was so nice to get together with a group of like-minded dressmakers, some from Leicester, um, some travelled quite away for the um, for the afternoon tea. And I'm really glad that the food and the service at the um, exchange bar uh, in, in Leicester was just fantastic and made it well worth their, their journey. Um, we had lovely ciabatta sandwiches and little um, cakes and little lady Mia joined us as well, Freya's little girl, um, and we just had a really lovely time. Um, I prepared a couple of uh, dressmaking themed games, which I'll pop the link to down below. I wasn't sure whether to share them as like a blog post or, um, I don't know, in some other way, but I'll pop a link down here anyway. Um, and if you want to use them for your dressmaking meetups, um, please do. Uh, just to warn you, the images aren't um, my own, so they aren't kind of copyrighted, but I'm only sharing them as a bit of fun, so we can all share the fun. 
Um, but one of the ones that I did, which was um, which went down really well, was the guess that pattern. And it's so surprising from a line drawing. You know, some of them you just immediately recognise. Some of them it really takes like quite a lot, um, a lot of uh, time to kind of recognise what what the pattern is. So um, yeah, if you do uh, download the uh, PDF and um, have a go yourself, let me know how you get on. Um, I've co of course included the answers as well because I wasn't going to make it impossible for you but um, yeah enjoy that. So what have I been making? I did make my denim mall cosy jersey dress by my handmade wardrobe patterns and um, I used the denim mall that I mentioned in my last vlog um, which is a really thick cosy sweatshirt fabric that we have in the shop. We've still got about three meters of it left I think um, and we've also got it in red we've got quite a bit of the red left um, and it's a really nice like rich tomato-y red so go and have a look at that um, I'll pop again a link down um, in the comments for for that and um, I paired that with the rib um, which I uh, mentioned again in my last vlog um, and that was an interesting learning opportunity we never call things mistakes at crafty so-and-so we call things learning opportunities and yeah i learned something from it so um what i learned was that when you use rib fabric on the hem you have to reduce the amount of um fabric basically that you need for the hem band because it stretches and rib generally if it's like a cotton rib or a rib that doesn't have a lot of elastane in um, it won't have the retention, it won't return. So what I found was that basically the ribs stretched out and then kind of didn't return, didn't kind of hug my body the way that I like it to. So um, I'll just jump up and pop that on. I haven't made the amends yet. Um, I say I haven't made the amends. I, I originally took out about a quarter of the um, length of the hem band. Um, but what I've realised now after attaching it is that it actually needs about a third taking out. And that will obviously differ depending on the amount of stretch your rib has. But um, I think this rib had about 50% stretch and the retention, the return on it wasn't, um, it didn't return to um, zero. It basically returned if you stretched out, held it for a little bit and then let go it took a long time to return back to zero so that's something to watch out for and if you do have a fabric like that you might need to really reduce the amount that you need um, what I would recommend is basting the rib on I didn't I went gung-ho and just attached it with the overlocker like you do so now I've got some nice overlocking to unpick which is fun so yeah I'll jump up now and pop it on and then you can see um, where we're at with it. Yeah, and I don't know if some of you have seen on Instagram, um, Rudy from Rudel's Unique has shown off these pockets to their absolute best uh, by showing that you can fit a whole magazine and a bottle of wine in them. So that's definitely what we designed them for. So thanks, Rudy, for um, finding their true use. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I'm going to leave this on and um, sit down and I'll show you the next so thing. The next thing that I've made is um, an everyday amazing top from my handmade wardrobe patterns again and um, it's this one here so um, I made this using a lovely poly crepe which you can see kind of drapes really beautifully um, it's quite a thin crepe um, we've got it in lots of colors in the shop so we've got it in grey in coral in this lovely kind of tealy green it's like a sea green um, we've also got it in a deep purple um, a cream which uh, Freya made up as an Ogden cami for the dressmaker's um, afternoon tea and um, we've got it in a mint as well, in a pale mint so um, it's a really lovely fabric for this kind of make um, and it's going to be ideal for spring for pairing with all those nice bright um, florals and, and those kind of um, brighter fab patterns that you need something a little bit more subdued to go with um, so a little bit about this make, I have made it with the frill sleeves, 
Um, I finished those off just by um, overcasting um, and then I've just turned it up with a little hem and that looks really cute. Uh, I haven't done the bottom hem yet but I think I'm going to plan to do exactly the same again. Um, as Freya mentioned in our last video, it, it is a super simple make and I don't know why it's taken me so long to actually finish it. I've just been getting on with other things really. Um, but I'm looking forward to finishing this so I can wear it um, in the spring. So uh, I think that's about all I've made since I last caught up with you. There's been a few samples for the shop. Um, the window is going to look absolutely fantastic. Freya and Becky have been working really hard on that and I've been helping them out a little bit with a few things but there's mostly things that they've been um, they've been working on for the shop window and that's going up tomorrow so um, I can't wait to, to get those all in the window and have it looking nice and fresh and springy. Um, let's hope that the weather does decide to actually follow suit as well, fingers crossed. <laughs> so yeah that's it for my makes. But now on to my plans. Um, like I said, it will be March into April, my plans. Um, I can't really do a plan for the month. I find it quite difficult to um, restrict myself to getting some things done by a certain deadline, especially when it comes to sewing and owning a um, business, because there's always things that come up. You know, suddenly we need to produce a sample for a magazine or we need to produce um, something for an event or something like that. Um, or we have a customer that comes in with a query and we have to do a bit of research um, into how to how to figure that out for a private lesson or that kind of thing. So, um, so yeah, I do try to kind of fit my um, makes around, around that a bit more. Um, but I do have a deadline for one thing, which is the next thing, the first thing that I'm going to make, just so that it's definitely done. And um, that is my skirt for the little lawn party. So it's an online Instagram party, which is organised by uh, The Bright Blooms and Handmade Ditsy Tulip. And um, the idea is that it's a celebration of spring, basically, and spring sewing. Um, and you make something in either a cotton lawn or a floral fabric. Um, and yeah, share it on Instagram with the hashtag a little lawn party and um, everybody gets to see the lovely spring makes and hopefully we all feel a lot springier and a little bit more, you know, revived, ready for spring, summer. Um, so I'm really looking forward to getting involved with this and um, my make's not actually that springy, although for me it is springy because in the winter I just basically live in what well, this kind of thing, you know, jumpers and jeans and things like that and it's really nice, it feels like a real change of the seasons when I put a skirt on. Um, I do wear my Cleos and my um, all the cute, cute skirts, um, A-line skirt, uh, quite a lot in the winter but a gathered skirt or a pleated skirt or a... Um, full circle skirt really makes me feel properly summery um, and it's a little less formal than a dress and you can pair it with a jumper still so it's kind of good transitional um, garments to, to pair together but um, yeah I the, the fabric that I've chosen I guess isn't really that springy but it does have some nice bright colours in. It's just on a navy base. And I do love a navy base for a um, printed fabric. So I'll uh, stop yabbering on and show you the beautiful fabric. It's a fabric from our range. So um, it's this one here. And that is the Chaffinch um, print on navy. We've also got it in an ochre. And um, it's by Lady McElroy. It's £14.50 a metre. And it's beautiful, really lovely, soft, lightweight lawn, as all the Lady McElroy um, fabrics are. And I've made um, a couple of tops. I made the Everyday Amazing top and um, a couple of other, other makes out of this fabric now. And I am in love with it. It's just lovely. It's really nice. Some lawns, um, this is kind of similar right to the Liberty Tarn lawn. Um, some lawns can be a little bit kind of crispy or a bit um, a bit too lightweight, but this really feels like it's got a little bit of substance to it still, but not too much. It's still lightweight. Um, the other thing that I absolutely love about this is it's going to go so well with the Everyday Amazing top that I've made already. So that's pretty much an outfit made there. Um, all I need to do is actually make it into a skirt and ta-da!
there you go it's gonna look absolutely gorgeous so I really can't wait to, to wear that as an outfit and um, if you want to get involved with the party uh, it runs from the 15th of March to the 15th of May and all you need to do as I said is share your makes with the hashtag a little lawn party and that's it so yeah get involved We'll be sponsoring the party by giving away copies of our patterns so there's even more reason to get involved and there's some absolutely fantastic um, sponsors that are also getting involved so do go over and take a look on their instagram site and follow the hashtag a little lawn party the other thing that i'm going to make is a another cow scarf um, i don't think you can ever have too many of them and they take so little time to make up they're a really nice little kind of quick make that you can whip up in about 20 minutes half an hour um, and they're a good way to show off a really fun novelty print so without again further ado I will actually show you the fabric and it's this fab cats everywhere print oh I'm holding it upside down <laughs> upside down cats everywhere Australian cats everywhere um, <laughs> and yeah absolutely love this it's gorgeous um, a girl called Boz featured it on her blog uh, sorry on her vlog uh, a little while ago and she'd made a really gorgeous little monetta out of it um, it was lovely and um, and yeah we've, we've still got a bit of this left so I think we've got about six meters of this left in the shop um, and it's also online as well so um, if you want some snap it up because it won't be there for very long this is the second time that we've had a similar cat's print in and it always just flies out you guys love cats just as much as I do um, I've had to ban my cat from the um, room today because he was just being an absolute vandal and um, we can't have that uh, so <laughs> yeah he's he's been banished to the rest of the house which he has so why he wants to be in here I don't know but um, but yeah anyway the the, um, the cats everywhere fabric is going to be a lovely cow scarf and I think it's going to be again a good kind of transitional piece that I can wear um, into the spring as well uh, to keep my neck warm so yeah that's going to be a nice quick make and then the last thing that I want to do is a bit of a rework so I'm not a big um, reworker refashioner but one of my um, kind of targets of the year was to start um, making things out of things that I've already got and refashioning a little bit um, so I've had this shirt for quite a while I picked it up from a charity shop um, red it's a red herring by um, Debenhams and picked it up for $1.99 and um, I just really liked the fabric um, it's like a real classic kind of um, blue and white stripe with a little um has it got a little pocket yeah it's got a little pocket on that side and these really cute little wooden buttons which i really like and um yeah i thought that possibly um just show you the whole thing there uh, i thought that possibly it would make a nice ogden cami maybe with the buttons left on so I'd leave the button placket and use that um, as a bit of a feature, maybe down the front or maybe down the back. Um, the other thing that I was thinking that I could do was like a scalp tee. So just keeping it really simple. Um, again, buttons down the front. Um, I don't think the scalp tee has any darts in it, so that would be ideal because I want to look for something that doesn't have darts because I really... I mean, I can add, add darts, but I think um, it kind of breaks up the line on stripes. Uh, so I want to ideally go for something that doesn't have that. And um, so, yeah, I'm going to have a look at the Ogden Cami pattern. Uh, um, and then I've got a copy of the Scout Tee um, by Grain Line Studios as well. So I might possibly have a look at using that as well. Um, so, yeah, that's that's my three makes. Um, I probably, again, will make a few other things. I've got a few samples to do for the shop. Um, got to make a nice laptop case and uh, that's for one of our workshops and I've been working on a few um, samples as well so yeah another thing I wanted to mention was I've been using the Athena Cacao I think that's how you say her name um, uh, sewing planner to organize my sewing but I've also been using it to um, plan out my notes for um, YouTube videos and for my blogs and things like that and I just want to say a huge thank you to her for producing this amazing um, well thought out sewing organizer that is just 
kind of changing the way that I organise myself and you know, getting me get me sorted because I find sometimes with sewing organisers they can be quite prescriptive and for me that doesn't really work because I like to kind of take pages out and move them around and that kind of thing but with this being um, a PDF printable sewing organiser it allows me to put it in a folder of my choice so um, I'll just show you my sewing organiser so I've put it in a big folder like this my sewing planner and then um, yeah it's a lever arch file yeah I've got first page is my measurements so um, we've got a nice realistic curvy lady there with my measurements all over her um, and that's great just to kind of have straight away to view um, I can move that to the beginning of any project as well so if I'm working on something that needs to be super fitted then I can move that to where I'm actually working on at the time um, and then it's got um, bits for uh, spaces for like my fabric stash which is fantastic um, although I haven't put all of my fabric stash on there because otherwise this folder would be like literally that big so um, yeah I'm gonna, gonna just limit it to the fabrics that I'm actually planning to use like now-ish um, that will also help me choose what to de-stash when I need to um, it's also got um, a list of your pattern stash which is great and again I have definitely not got all of my patterns in there but there's a few I've split that up actually into tops and jumpers, dresses, um, bottoms and <laughs> I think coats and other things um, like accessories and stuff like that and that's brilliant as well because I can just look right and say right I've got all of these um, uh, coat patterns or I've got all of these skirt patterns or that kind of thing and it helps me to you know, just get organised really. Um, so that is brilliant. But yeah, like I was saying, the most um, useful part of it for me has been the blog and um, vlog organiser because I can just print out a page when I need it um, and fill it in and then I am actually organised and I don't waffle on too much, although it doesn't seem to have worked in this video because this is probably going to be about half an hour long. So um, sorry about that, but yeah. Uh, imagine what I would be like if I didn't have this organiser. <laughs> so Athena has just launched her new ebook, um, which is all about um, planning your sewing and getting the most out of your out of your sewing time. And it's 123 pages plus 22 pages of a workbook. Um, and yeah, if it's anything like the PDF organiser, I would strongly recommend going to get it. I'm going to get myself a copy so I can get myself even more organised. And um, she's doing a 10% discount until Sunday. So if you're quick, you can get a nice little discount on that as well. And you can find her at Athena Cacao on Instagram. I'll pop a link below. Um, so yeah, that's about it, I think. Um, I better get sewing, as always. I've got lots to do. So um, until next time, happy sewing. Bye.